what's up y'all it is your girl angel and welcome back to angel's life so today's video is not different at all because low-key my channel was started on this so i do want to give y'all a quick little backstory on today's video recently i have been kind of like redefining what my channel is like i basically just kind of sat down and just wanted to really figure out what my channel is who my channel is for and and just figuring out what my content should consist of like figuring out my target target audience i feel like in the past i've tried some different things and it hasn't really like panned out the way that i thought that it would or i haven't gotten the views and so on and so forth and i have to decide whether i'm not giving this enough time i should try something else or so on and so forth and in me doing this, I, you know, I've really been narrowing down what my channel is and who my channel is for. Um, now, I actually planned on doing this video before I even started figuring this stuff out with my channel. But, you know, it's like, I, I guess this is all in like the perfect timing because I am like, redefining my channel and refocusing my channel so that my audience yeah i am kind of limiting myself and and narrowing down my audience but i feel like that's completely okay i'm fine with having a very marginalized group of people that i'm talking to because because that's just okay okay my content don't have to be for everybody i mean i'm sure there's not like a ton of i don't know like men watching my videos like I don't know <laughs> that might have been a bad analogy I don't know but I what I'm saying is I know that um like me narrowing down what my channel is about is going to narrow down my content for the people who that is for so hi my name is Angel welcome to Angel's Life where I make hair reviews in videos or hair content while additionally making military spouse content that's low-key what my channel started with and i feel like i haven't veered away from it but i definitely haven't touched on military content um in a while and that's crazy because i constantly still get people who watch my videos i constantly still get people who hit me up asking me questions and so on and so forth so i want to make sure i'm doing my due diligence to all my uh, military spouses out there and letting y'all know what the tea is okay like it's not just all about hair it is also about military content i am also a mommy so of course mommy things will be just sprinkled in there because as far as my life is concerned right now that is indeed a part of me being a military spouse i am a military spouse with a kid so eh, there we go <laughs> but now that we have that out the way let's talk about my 10 tips okay for people who are pcs into yakota first things first this will be one of several videos in a series called surviving yakota for those of y'all that do not know i am a military spouse who is currently stationed at yakota and have been stationed at yakota for the past three years i am pcsing in january hopefully it was originally supposed to be november but with the whole covid thing now it's supposed to be january but since i am on the outwards okay of our journey i got the tea <laughs> i got the tea okay and i know y'all want to know so again this is part one and part one is what happens when you get here i'm basically going to do imagine this as a sandwich okay so you got your first piece of bread boom that's that's part one that's that's what's happening when you're on the way here and what, when you're getting here i do have the pcs like a uh, like clearance like medical clearance and stuff i will go ahead and leave a card for that right here here somewhere but you know I talked about that already so that's another part before you get here but now we're talking about once you are getting overseas once you are getting to Yakota what is going to happen okay so that's that's the first that's your bread and then we have your 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 meat okay this is a bland sandwich right here we have your meat boom that stings at you 
to your jobs, your schools, your daycare, your, you know, all those things, okay? And then boom, we're going to have that final layer, which is most likely going to be PCSing out and so on and so forth, okay? Now, I just said that as if it's going to be three videos. If it's a couple more videos, call that the lettuce and the cheese, okay? For people who like lettuce and cheese on their sandwich. <laughs> but I've rambled enough. I'm already five minutes in. Let's get to, let's get to why y'all are here. Okay, so and I have a little note in case I'm looking down. So, um, step one. So we, me and Darius, were fortunate enough to be able to fly on the same flight. I do know situations where people do not fly on the same flight. We were also additionally we flew commercial. We did not fly uh, like Space A or a military flight. We did fly commercial. So this first, this first step may or this first step won't necessarily be for you if you are not flying uh if, if you're flying through a military flight but if you are flying commercial step number one will be for you so step number one is pack smart okay and bring cash pack smart bring cash when we came here we didn't have a child so obviously us coming here would be different but when you're at the airport and you're trying to maneuver like Narita, both uh, Narita and uh, I can't think of the other airport, but both airports in Japan are, you know, they're hectic. There's a lot of people that, you know, Japan has a lot of people, period, but it's hectic and a lot of people, you don't want to have a whole bunch of bags, okay? But at the same time, you want to have enough bags in case step number two be on some other stuff but really really pack smart pack enough pack what you need but you you just don't want to have more than 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 what you need because the airports trying to get your bags trying to figure things out can be very very hectic okay so if it is absolutely not mandatory do not take it let him let it go with tmo okay pack pack smart and bring cash. The reason that I say bring cash because the bus from both Narita and Haneda got it. At, <laughs> the bus from both Narita and Haneda both cost money. Okay, the bus from Narita I want to say is forty dollars, and then the bus forty dollars per person, and the bus from Haneda is twenty or thirty dollars I want to say. Okay, so commute like make sure you bring cash okay for those people who are fortunate enough to have a good sponsor communicate with your sponsor you're more than welcome to verify this information i literally used to work at vehicle ops so i know what i'm talking about plus i've taken these buses <laughs> so i definitely know what i'm talking about from experience both working at vehicle ops and taking the bus you know i wasn't we wasn't expecting to have to pay a quick a quick 80 dollars getting off the bus but you do okay so if unless your sponsor is coming to pick you up if your sponsor lets you know you're gonna have to take a bus from narita to from narita to the base or from haneda to the base verify the pricing it's 40 per person from narita and i want to say 20 or 30 per person from haneda and also the haneda bus only runs one time so if you can get to narita that's better because it runs three times uh in the evening i want to say it's two four and six Okay, so depending on what flight you have, you know, we'll let you know how much time you'll have to wait. Also, communicate with your sponsor the directions on how to get to the actual bus stop. It's really not hard to get to, but just in case you're one of those people who are really, really bad with directions, communicate with your sponsor. If I can, I will also leave a link. It's a special. I'm, I'm giving. Oh, dropping gems. If I can, I will link down below the actual... Um, map for uh narita and haneda if i can okay but it's really not that complicated i've been to both it's not that complicated okay so uh tip number two is once you arrive now boom you done left the airport you done got on the bus and you're you, you know you're you're here of course the bus is going to bring you to tlf once you get to tlf right be just in case be prepared to stay at tlf at least two weeks at the very least two weeks if you are one of the unlucky ones if you're one of the unlucky families it can be upwards of a month 
So be prepared. That's why in step number one, I told y'all to pack smart. Make sure you have enough clothes or, you know, things that are able to wash. If you're coming like in between one season and the next, make sure, you know, you have clothes for this season and that season and so on and so forth. You, you basically want to make sure you have what you need. Okay. On average, and I've actually spoken with the hotel to verify this, on average, people stay about two weeks. Okay, but there is some occasions where people have to stay longer, especially with the coronavirus. With COVID-19 happening, you may have to stay longer. You may have to quarantine there for a minimum of two weeks or, you know, you really don't know what the situation is. So be prepared, you know, pack enough for, for you, your family. If, if you're a single airman, pack enough for yourself. If it's you and a family, make sure you pack enough so that your kids are content and you are content, you know, just in case. Because if you do have to quarantine, you cannot go to the commissary, you cannot go to the BX, you literally cannot go anywhere if you have to quarantine and TLF. So make sure you pack smart and you are prepared for an extended and very private stay. And like I said, we were in TLF for 28 days. Okay, we were a, one of a part of the unlucky few that had to stay almost an entire month. Okay, so be prepared just in case you have to stay a month. Okay, step number three, and I feel like this is kind of out of order, but not really. Step number three, cell phone service. So one of the things that people are most concerned when they get here, like, you know, their sponsors telling them, they probably reading the Facebook post and all this stuff like that. They're trying to get a cell phone so that they can communicate with their family back home. If you have Sprint or if you have T-Mobile, you do not have to switch your service provider or get a new phone or plan or anything. If you have Sprint or T-Mobile, since they have joined now, Add the $5 Japan uh, calling. It's additional $5 a month per line, but I can guarantee you it is going to save you so much money versus coming here and either trying to get a, a, a SIM card, trying to get Wi-Fi through FedTech, or going with AU or SoftBank. The, the cell phone service here is outrageous and it's crap. It is outrageous and it is crap. So if you don't have Sprint or T-Mobile, I would actually advise you to get Sprint or T-Mobile because it's just better. Or, you know, if you just have to, I think SoftBank is definitely better than AU, but either way, it's really just not that good, y'all. I'm just going to be completely honest. If you have Sprint or T-Mobile, that's definitely what I would do. Or you can go the super cheap way and just get like a, a fed tech a wide pocket wi-fi download line whatsapp and google duo and you're straight okay and you pay that little what forty dollars for the pocket wi-fi through fed tech and that's it and that that's all you have to do i've had people i've talked to people who have softbank and who have had au who went over their data and they couldn't use their phone unless they have wi-fi or was charged the extra two and three hundred dollars you can only pay your bill like on one specific day and if you're late there's extra fees and it's just it's as far as i'm concerned it's literally just a scam so if you have sprint t-mobile bring your phone bring your bring your phone and your plan add that five dollar japan call in to each of your lines and you're and you're good to go and like i said an alternative is getting a pocket wi-fi bringing your phone with you getting a pocket wi-fi uh, and downloading line whatsapp and google duo that's basically what everybody relies on anyway everybody like everybody i'm sure in your squadron has line or whatsapp because that's how most people communicate so do not absolutely do not feel pressured into having to get a cell phone service through the japanese company softbank or au do not do not let them swindle you into that me and darius got swindled into it it had a very hefty bill to pay for once we realized we didn't even need it okay so that's tip number three. Uh, tip number four, buy your car in cash. Okay. Um, you would, you'd be surprised how many people don't. You'll be surprised how many people, you know, want to live above their means and get some fancy car and then end up can't pay the insurance, especially a lot of single airmen that I know, you know, not pointing out nobody, but I'm just saying, be responsible with your money, buy your car in cash. On average, you can get a decent car here for $1,200. 
you know you can get a, a even decenter one for fifteen hundred dollars so the best thing that i suggest to do is get your car like get fifteen hundred dollars before you even come, have your little $1,500 to the side, and then as soon as you touch down and you're off of quarantine, you just start looking for a car. There's your code of swap. Uh, uh, you can look on your code of swap. Swap. You can look on the Lemon Lot uh, at the UJO. And then there's Kelly and Kelly, and there's like your code of auto sales, which is like, I don't know if it's called your code of auto sales. I'm pretty sure it's called your code of auto sales, though. But it's right outside the East Gate. Like, literally, as soon as you come out the East Gate, boom, right in front of you, there's a car sales place. That's where me and Darius got our car, okay? And our car has worked perfectly fine since we've been here, okay? So, definitely look into that. Bring you a, bring you about $1,500, and you can get you, I mean, $1,500, yeah, $1,500, and you can get you a decent car. If you want to go lower than that, even twelve. I feel like you can get a very decent car for twelve hundred dollars. Okay, but make sure you um, again buy your car in cash. And again, save the money so you basically, as soon as you touch down, you can just get the car. And that's for uh, single airmen's families, whoever. Jim. Okay. <laughs> Tip number five. Um, Make sure you attend Right Star. I, I'm pretty sure it's mandatory for the airmen to attend Right Star, but spouses attend Right Star. And the reason that, uh, the two reasons that I will tell a spouse to attend Right Star is one, they have some very, very valuable information about Right Star when it comes to child care, um, when it comes to job services, when it comes to just general information about the base, Right Star gives you that. And two, you get your driver's license during Right Star. So make sure you you make sure you have a current and valid driver's license from from your previous state wherever you were stateside. Make sure you have that current and valid driver's license because that's what's going to allow you to test at Right Start to get the Japanese driver's license. Okay, and no worries, it's an open book test. It's not hard at all. There's like a gnat in here. It's like driving me crazy, but it's it's not hard at all. So make sure you attend Right Start. You know if you can arrange something before hand get on the Facebook page at the Yakota Air Base or Yakota Spouses and Family um, Facebook page I'll try to leave links for those two if I can down below um, make sure you set it up so that you are able to find somebody to maybe watch your child for you know if you have a small child or like a like a child that can't sit still a toddler or something like you know my son m watch them for a um, you know that time so that you can attend right start so that you can get your driver's license and get all that valuable information at right start okay because i can only give y'all so much <laughs> i'm giving y'all as much as i can okay um so yeah tip five attend right start so tip number six is download your code to connect a day or two before you arrive and that'll help with any um job searches on base hours of operation for you know the bx or the commissary or any you know any places that you need at the very least i would say download your code to connect because it lets you know the hours of operation for everything and when you're in tlf you're gonna need to know you know when the commissary is open and closed um when you know the gas station is open and closed small things like that when housing is open and closed because you might have to stay on their tails and so on and so forth so just make sure you download yeah i wouldn't do it all like a month or two ahead of time just you know a couple days so you can just start looking start getting you know your things together so yeah, download your Code to Connect. I've talked about it in a previous video a year or two ago, but your Code to Connect really is a very beneficial app. So shout out to the creators of your Code to Connect. Uh, tip number seven, uh, towers versus garden units. So I live in a tower, okay, and we actually had the option to live in a garden unit when we when we uh, when we were getting out of TLF, and I chose the tower. As far as I'm concerned, that was my worst mistake. Okay, I would have definitely chosen a garden unit just because um, that I, I this so this is how I feel, right? And a lot of it has to do with angel and a child. That's one. Okay, I feel like the towers are for couples, like single couples, just a man and a woman, and the garden units are for families. Okay, 
and uh and the reason i feel like the garden units are for families is because obviously you have the little outside area a child has free reign to run around and play like you don't really have that space in the towers you know um and not just that, I do feel like garden units are better for all my very business savvy people or anybody who plans on coming here to try and run their own home business. I'll touch into that uh, in the next video, more into that. But the garden units are better for business. You know, having somebody come all the way up to your seventh floor tower, yeah, of course they'll do it, but it's not convenient. A garden unit is very convenient. Being able to just walk up on your door, knock, and whatever the service is, it's a lot easier. So I do think the garden units are better for families and better for people who plan on or want to start a home business. Uh, and the towers are for couples who don't plan on having babies, you know, want to travel, want to, you know, get out, whatever, whatever. So, you know, and just are used to that, that tower life. Um, even in my apartment, my previous apartments, both of them, well, one of them was on a higher floor, but usually I'm right, you know, I'm right at walking entry level and that's kind of how I prefer it. But that's just my opinion. Again, uh, tip number seven is towers are for couples and garden units are for families and people who plan on uh, starting a home business. Uh, tip number eight, uh, the commissary. So the commissary is overpriced and uh, you should just venture off base to other stores. There's Say You, there's AI Mall, there's a grocery store in there. There, I mean, there's just so many other options. I'll actually go into this a little bit more too as far as places that you can go to get your groceries, um, like Joyful Honda and so on and so forth. But the commissary is overpriced. Half of the stuff they sell to you is expired or is going to expire tomorrow. And the quality of the fruits and vegetables are just not that great. You can literally get some fresh, some really, really fresh fruits and vegetables by, you know, just going a couple feet off base. So I would not recommend buying any fresh fruits or vegetables on base. I, to, to be honest, just as far as grocery shopping, you should just pry. The commissary is convenient. So if you don't have a car yet or if you have a lot of kids and you just don't have the time to go off base, then I understand. But you can definitely get better quality food off base. So that is just, you know, I think that's important to know right in the beginning because you will be in TLF. TLF does have like little kitchenettes. And a lot of people do go grocery shopping or even if you send somebody for, you know, groceries and stuff like that, expect to get a whole bunch of expired shit <laughs> okay. or stuff that is going to expire tomorrow, will grow, so you better get to cooking. Um, yeah. <laughs> Tip number nine. Um, for those people who are looking to buy furniture, shop around first. Take a trip to Yakuska. I feel like these are the things that people are worried about. So, you know, as soon as you get here, you're going to be worried about, you know, housing. Housing is always going to be the first thing. Like, as soon as you touch down, jobs, housing, jobs, housing, that's always your first thing. So, um, shop around for furniture before you just decide to settle for anything at the BX. The BX has a very, very, very small furniture section, and it's not good. It's not good. So um, go to Yakuska, take a trip to Yakuska, take a trip to Atsugi, take a trip to Ikea, take a trip to Notori. To, you know, venture out to these different places before you just decide or settle on something that the BX has. Now, if you see something that the BX that you absolutely love, well then girl, go for it. But I would definitely say shop around before you, before you know, just before you just go into the BX because you feel like it's convenient. You know, there's definitely, definitely better options out there. And that's only for the people like us who did not bring furniture and so on, so on and so forth. Which, believe it or not, there's a lot of people, you know. So, yeah. And tip number 10. And tip number 10 may be a little bit controversial. In a future video, I will get more in depth on why I feel this way. I'm going to give you, this is this is actually for sure going to be a fourth video because I'm going to say the pros and cons of each and what to do if you are already in that situation and so on and so forth. But anyway, tip number 10 is don't get pregnant. Okay, Yakota, and it could be, this is my first military base, so it could be all military bases, and it could not be, but what I will say, Yakota is a baby-making factory, okay, hands down, okay, everybody is either pregnant or about to get pregnant or just finished being pregnant, it's just pregnancy running rampant on this goddamn face, 
and um, or don't get pregnant here. I'm not saying don't get pregnant here because everybody gets pregnant here. I am saying don't get pregnant here for another reason. I will get more into that later on. Of course, I am speaking from an experience. I obviously had a child here and I'm ready to tell you the horror. <laughs> But um, again, okay, these are just my 10 tips. Of course, they are biased. These are from my own personal experiences and, and, and what I've been through at Yakota, okay? Um, there are definitely some good things. There are definitely some bad things. There's definitely just a lot. And I'm basically here to just keep, keep it real with y'all and be completely honest with you. Not sugarcoat anything. Just kind of give y'all the raw and real, the pros, the cons, the ups and the downs of being at Yakota. But those are just my 10 tips for people who are coming here. You know, it's a, it's, I don't know if it's, I don't think I even know when PTS season is, but I know I'm always reading about people saying that they're coming here soon or they're coming here in a few weeks or in a month or they just arrived and so on and so forth. And this is, you know, these are tips for people who are coming and who just want to know some information and aren't, isn't getting the information from their sponsor or from the Facebook pages, or you just want a little bit more information from somebody who is here, from somebody with a little bit of experience. So yeah. That's it. I love y'all so much. Make sure y'all go follow me on Instagram. <laughs> um, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Please give this video a thumbs up if you do like it and if it is informal to you. Um, and I will see y'all in the next video. Peace.